Okay, my outstanding friends, this is this is beyond belief. Just accidentally this morning, I clicked on something and it brought me to Phil Harris's page about my mud fossil research. Now, I worked with Phil years ago, and unfortunately, Phil has passed on. And I and my earliest earliest research, I thought was gone because that my channel had been destroyed and yada 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 all that stuff well phil has preserved it here all right this is introduction to mud fossil university the evidence now this was my when i first this was seven years ago but even earlier than that i had another channel just called mud fossils which was destroyed and he saved all of this stuff He's got like 35 of my videos here. Mud Fossils, part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, six, seven, eight, nine. I went 10, 11. I had all of this done, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Then I had a 200 foot tall human giants, then 60s, then Yale University, and all of this stuff. I. I didn't realize it still existed. <laughs> so I am going to just go through the whole thing again. And it's going to be very interesting for me because now this is almost 10 years later. What do I know now that I didn't know then? Well, we're going to find out. I'm just going to go through each one of them. They're not long. These are, this is when I was doing real short ones. Yeah, 10, 11 minutes, 6 minutes, 5 minutes, 14 minutes. Now I'm, I'm trying to get so deep into it that... It takes hours, literally, to do it. To do it right, it takes a long time. It's just the way it is. Not my fault. If you want to do it right, you do it right. You want to do it quick, you do it quick. This was when I was doing it quick, and I, I don't know whether I was doing it quick because I didn't know what I was doing, or well, I, I knew what I was doing, but didn't, I didn't have the details. Now I have the details. Once you get into the details, that takes time. That's all that matters. Okay, my friends, let me explain to you a few things about how this whole thing happened. If you've been with me at all, you understand that I had some message I felt in my mind to go look in the woods. I found the mud fossils, and they ended, ended up being giant human beings. And I had them tested. I had all that stuff done. But when I found them, it, it was so much pushback that I decided I would create literally a book and all the videos to back it up. So I, I have a ton of these videos. I thought I had lost them all. And just accidentally, I found them, and we're gonna go through them one by one and, and, and see what I said then and what I say about it now. It might be totally different, I don't know. I can't remember what I said then, but I think it was pretty, pretty close. You know, I, I obviously make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes, but that's what I wanna go over and see what did I say then, and did it make sense? Maybe I was being a fool back then, and people realized I was a fool. I don't know. But I think I, right now, there's just no question it's true. And they, they, they're signed off on it. Everybody is, has agreed that these things are true. There was these exceptionally preserved soft body creatures in this particular layer that was the red bed, the gray clay, and the black cap, exactly where mine came from. And mine are giant human beings. Now, we're gonna go through these videos, and I think there's like 20 or something like that. But I, I'm, I have many, many more than that. But these are the earliest ones I did to prove my claims. Now, did I prove them? I don't know, maybe I didn't. But I can tell you what, they destroyed me, and it ended up with I had to really shut everything down because it ended up with police and lawyers. All right, so that's as far as I want to talk about that at the moment. Maybe I talk about it in in my videos. I don't I don't know because there, it it related to this head right here. So anyway, we're going to go through this. Now, before we even get started, I want to say something about Phil Harris. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't this stuff would all be gone. Right, because I took everything down. Now, he must have somehow got this and put it together. And he's got 35 of my videos here. I believe they're all mine. I'm not certain, but I believe they are. And um, I don't know whether we recompile them, but these are not actually, I think he's just recorded them. Mud Fossils Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, and it goes all the way down a, a ton of them. Um, and it starts off with the introduction 
to Mudfossil University orientation, the evidence. Now, this was Phil's find right here. He found a bloody heart, and I, when I say bloody, blood. And that's and he. This was in 15 minute. He took the 15 minute challenge. Back then, I was doing what it was called the 15 minute challenge. You go out and in 15 minutes, if you can't find a, a mud fossil, I want you to tell me <laughs> if you couldn't find. In other words, you could find a mud fossil in 15 minutes. He found that in 15 minutes, and I'm sure we're going to be seeing it because it's in the video. So here goes. All right, I'm sure the sound is not going to be the best because I'm sort of playing and we're listening live. Here goes. All right, I just want to explain. I've been forced into this position that I'm in. I presented mud fossils to Yale University several years ago, and um, they rejected them. And I could understand that. Uh, and, and they said that I would need CAT scans and DNA and all these kind of things, and that... Um, I should have uh, things done that way, and I did. And they still uh, uh, will not accept them all the way up till today. And I have three DNA, DNA tests, seven CAT scans. Now, to go further with this, I saw this head was shown on uh, America on Earth. Scott Walter said it was just a sandstone head, and it, it never was alive. And he dismissed it and wouldn't discuss it with me after I confronted him. Now. The chemistry of it shows that... The I, I do want to say that he did, we went back and forth several times because he said on TV in less than one minute, this was, this was just, or that's just iron oxide. How could you not understand that blood is made out of iron? And the iron has, the blood has oxides. <laughs> that's just the way it works. And who would carve a nose like that in less than one minute on national TV he discounted this so that upset me and I got involved in this and, and it turned disastrous so here it goes that's the blood that's ferrous oxide the O2 and the O3 variety the skull was crushed in the nose has been displaced here the bone foramens are all in the correct places. The, uh, the irises of the eyes have eroded. Uh, there's a, it has some form of a cap on. You can slide a playing card up in here. We had it um, CAT scan, and it shows the fracture in the skull and a sword or, or a blade of some sort uh, looking uh, puncture coming straight down through the top. Now, I gotta be honest with you, that you, you really had to look close to see those things. It was the worst CAT scan I've ever seen. And, um, and that was part of this whole nightmare scenario. But I had seven other CAT scans done by Jesse Garant and Associates in Canada and the United States. Very, very high quality stuff. They did 2D and 3D. Now, 3D is not great in this kind of of um, mudstone, all right? Some of them, you, you can get some pretty good detail inside, but when they turn uh, like almost completely like to mud like this, and I have the same things. Well, I, hold on, um, eh, I'll show you later. I, I have a lot of them that are like this, and I've had them CAT scanned, some of them, and you really can't see, you can see the outline of the bones, but you don't see the very deep details. Uh, the 2D, you'd see this thing just like, like it was staring you in the face, and you'd see it was, it was just, there's no question it was alive. All right, so what else do I have to say? Here we go. What happened was I decided, well, yes, it is sandstone, but that's not, that doesn't mean that it's never been real. So I had to figure out why the sandstone replaced the flesh, and I did. So I have that chemistry done as well. It's because it's the, the silicon dioxide, silicon in your skin is 50 times heavier than anywhere else in your body. And what happens is it mixes with the, di the oxygen, silicon dioxide, which is feldspars, and that is sand. And okay, see right there, that's sort of a mistake. It is, it's, cr it's true that this has 50 times more silicon, and that's exactly what Yale says, it's silicon, um, because of the silicon, which was unusual, and that's because the earth was wrenched and all the silicon ooze from the ocean floor came up. At that point, I didn't know that.
And I don't did I, I didn't know about the boiling either, I don't think, at this point. Because that that's the key. They have to be boiled with the, all the blood in them and everything else. And for quite some time, simmered, you know, I mean, pretty good simmering for a long time with a ton of silicon. And by the way, I just did, a, 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 oh, about six months ago, I started, I got, I'm going to look at it shortly, probably within the next day or two, of a couple of mice, unfortunately, donated their little lives to this experiment and it's um i put in silica now which is siliceous ooze basically and it's, the silica is unbelievable it weighs 2.5 times more than water that's why it sinks to the bottom of the ocean when we got hit by the impact of venus the whole earth wrenched and we had a worldwide flood created the three layers and all the silicon infused into the waters and caused these, well, let me just say exactly what Yale says because of what I told them. Remember now, I, I was forced into this because Yale wouldn't pay attention. And then they went ahead and wrote this paper. See, this was years after I, and I've talked with this guy, Derek Briggs, about it. And exceptional preservation of soft-bodied, they call them etocarda biota, that's just some name they threw on them. This is soft-bodied creatures promoted by silica-rich oceans. Now, they changed it. Now, he knew that I had DNA and CAT scans and specimens and everything else of giant human beings. He knew that. Derek Briggs absolutely 100% knew that. And they turned this around and said they were nothing more than like jellyfish. There was no bones, there was no teeth, no nothing. <laughs> I had all that stuff. He refused to look at it. This is what we're up against in academia. Now, once again, it was Derek Briggs that gave me all the problem with the head, too. We had to have a CAT scan, and I, I said, all right, we'll have a CAT scan. And um, because it, it was Jim Burchill and Arlie Caudill had this head. I think Arlie found it in Kentucky in a mud bank. And Jim presented it to Scott Walter on TV and less than one minute dismissed. So I got involved in it and I, I believe I reached out to Jim and I said, Jim, that head is real and we can prove it. And, but proof doesn't matter. It does not matter. He could have that easily DNA tested now, no problem whatsoever. Because now the technology, I had mine it was the first in the world, and, and it was well done and I mean very, very well done. The guy's a nice, nice guy from this Helix Biolabs. And um, as a matter of fact, another one of my friends I was just talking to yesterday said he had discussions with Tom about doing something. I don't know what they're going to do or if he's going to do anything. But um, you would think these people would be interested in this. No, not at all. wouldn't even talk to me. Just don't bring them here. Don't talk to me. Forget about it. And, and that's not the way I do business. And that got me into a lot of trouble with literally the police and lawyers. And it was related to this head. And, and that caused me to basically flush the system. Well, these, could, these videos are going to be really long, I got a feeling. But that's just what it is. If you want to learn, you learn. No. And the sand erodes away in, in a lot of cases, and you end up with mudstone underneath, which is the fleshy parts. And then you go in deeper than that, and you have limestones, which is the prophylic, the prof prophoritic type of limestone, which has all of these fibers. And they found all this stuff, and the chemistry's been done. DNA tests have been done. Seven CAT scans, three DNA tests. There's no question about it. So I've been forced into the position I'm in. And I've been rejected arrogantly and, and, and um, by the, all these universities, Yale, Harvard, University of Texas, uh, John Hopkins, I go on, 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 on. I, I contact literally every single university and virtually no responses at all except the ones that responded were very arrogant and try to put me in my place. Well, I have DNA evidence and I have unimpeachable specimens that have, have undergone all this scientific scrutiny. And I'll, I'll show you what I, I did in a second. If you ever needed more proof than this, this is a lung sent, into us, uh, by, to, sent to me by a guy named Gary Evans. Um, and he just found it. And uh, 
what wanted me to identify it for him is obviously a lung, and I have all of the um, uh, lung anatomy to show that. And this is where the um, airway comes in, and then it breaks off. This is the oxygen, deoxygenated blood that is trying to get some new oxygen. As it gets oxygen, it turns red. You see, I want to tell you something. You see the thing I was using there, scratching my screen? <laughs> That's why I use a feather. People say, what's up with the feather? Well, I want to point to stuff, but I don't want to scratch my screen. There's no question the outside is uh, coated with the pleura, and I have hundreds of lungs. And this one here is literally bleeding blood. So there's no it's question what it is, and that could be DNA tested. No, absolutely no question. This stuff doesn't go bad. Everybody thinks it goes bad. It doesn't go bad like they think. The, the blood goes, the blood is chelates. And this has been proven, they found in the T-Rex blood. So it's just, we have to change the mindset of the people that are taking the money from the students and ignoring the fact. And if educators aren't intelligent enough to see what I just showed you in that mud fossil lung is this particular articulation of a normal lung, and this happens to be a human one, and that could be as well, I have no clue, but it is absolutely no question this. And if they think that uh, avoiding this and ignoring this and saying, oh, this could be anything, all I can say is you're, you're, you're uh, uh, breaching your fiduciary duty and your fiduciary duty is to the students, not to yourself, not to make yourself look like experts and you can't be wrong. Well, that's not going to fly anymore because the students are the ones that are being hurt. All right, this is from a CAT scan, um, and we had seven CAT scans done. They were done by Jesse Grant and Associates, wonderful people. I'm going to show you um, their credentials in a minute. But that the the actual nail bed is here and it's very apparent when you and this is this actually is the what was sent to them to, to do the scanning and you can see the uh, the darkness of the bone black that's in here and uh, in the um, in the CAT scan everything's very apparent and there's the investment of the um, tendons on the side these angular pieces on the end is where the um, uh, apical tuft is, is seen and this is an, a completely eroded apical tuft. I have so much stuff it's it's embarrassing and for for academia to do what they have done now this goes back 12 years or so at least when I had all the evidence and these these videos go back this one here I think was seven years but I was compiled all that stuff up till this point in time. So, and I had some from earlier than that that um, were gone. This was under the Mud Fossil University logo. Prior to that, I had another channel that I had to dismiss, and this is the one that Phil Phil protected and saved. Absolutely amazing. I wish he was here today. I could thank him. Any any good. Uh anatomist can tell you, and I've had this done, Gil Headley, who is a world famous um, autopsy uh, trainer, uh, goes around the world and trains on doing autopsies, uh, checked out all my information, he agrees 100% with what I'm saying. Yeah, I just want to make make one point, he agrees that this, this is, looks like the same thing he finds in, in his autopsies. Now, he's never said the giants were real or any of that stuff. I don't want to say anything. He, all I ever asked him is about the tendon investments. And, you know, I was learning. I had a lot of, lot, lot of learning to do. And he was the only, only one in the world, basically, that knew anything about fascia. When I first got a hold of Gill, he was the only one that knew about fascia, and he called it fuzz. And I said, what do you mean by fuzz? And he says, it's just gooey stuff. They take it out and they throw it away. And I said, no, you're kidding me. He says, no, 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 it's just in there. It's packing material. You don't really need it. He says, it gets in the way of the." And I said, well, I think we got something else going on. And anyway, after a short, then that was old, a long time ago. And, um, and by 2015, I wrote the paper about fascia and fascia facilitated fossilization fluid filled highway will cover the whole body it's one gigantic system all of this stuff about it and that it can reconfigure itself and all this stuff now that they're starting to talk about yes i had all that stuff 2015 that's 10 years ago
almost. Well, earlier than that, but 10 years ago, I had it all put in the paper, and I wrote a book and all that stuff. But I, well, I thought I lost everything. Boy, I'll tell you, this, I'm, I'm, I'm in good spirits. Now, I, I just want to tell you something. Back when I initially exposed all this stuff, I had expected this to take off very quickly, and the people that were involved would be be known to, to be real scientists. Well, it didn't happen that way. They attacked everybody. Everybody that worked with me was literally attacked. And I was told never to mention their names and so forth from a lot of them. Now, Gil, I never really said, well, he, he, he didn't want to be known as to be a supporter of my ideas. He is an anatomist. He said, That's, he's, he said I'm an anatomist. You show me something and I'll try to help you. And I said, fabulous, thank you. And he, that's all he ever did. He never said, yes, they're giants or whatever. But I, um, this is how I got a hold of him. This was, this was the fuzz speech. And this was where he was talking about the, the fascia. And then he was talking about the fuzz and how it hardens up and gets stiff and all that stuff. Yes. And then, and that goes 15 years ago, and it was called fuzz, and they just cut it up and threw it away. And this was, this is another one, fabulous, strolling under the skin. See it? Look at that. That's how smooth these things move under your skin. Look at this. Microscopic analysis. That was a fabulous one. Look at that. These are the tendons moving under the skin. See? Now, fascia resistance, da 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 da, no, no, no. Then he, this is the fuzz speech, and I don't know when that was. He had a whole batch of them. And then he goes reconsidering the fuzz. Now, this was 12 years ago, and this is after I talked to him. I said, There's something different about this fuzz. It's not just fuzz. And, and now he's, that was like 12 years ago. Right now, he's on a, a United States tour in Canada. The last I knew he was in Canada, but he's doing the whole United States one state at a time for the last year or so. I think he's getting ready to wind it up in the next few months, but um, absolutely stunningly talented guy and understands the anatomy of the human body and has an open mind. He doesn't, he, he, he will speak to you. He's not shut off and everybody else was. Not a single other one would talk to me even about it. I even took a course at Johns Hopkins and tried to talk to people. I talked to, I don't want to, that was a whole nother issue. I wanted him to look at my research and he just absolutely refused. They all did. So it's a, it's a systemic problem with academia. It's time to, to, to shut that thing down and go, go to a real system of education. It's not, there's no education now. This is indoctrination and menticide. They're going to get you in there. They're going to say, you have to say what I tell you to say. Give me a bunch of money. I'll give you a piece of paper. Then you can get a job. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. You know, the funny thing is, I'm saying the exact same things I said back then about academia. But back then, I was really getting, I was sort of threatened. Now, listen to this now. I mean, I was getting threatened. Now, uh, this finger, uh, well, you saw it's pretty big. And uh, we figure it's about a 50-foot person. And now we have much bigger than that. Uh, let me show you some other shots here. Now, this is the a hair follicle that we found um, that has the, the, the... Every time I say we, it's always, it's really me. You know, I, but I'm, I'm trying to work with as many people as I can. And, you know, this was all my stuff from my property. It's right here on my property. So, um, when I say we, this is my stuff. I, whenever I say anything else, I will always say somebody else's name. But I am we. <laughs> fingers came from. There's a knuckle and there's a bunch of fingers that we found. Uh, and then this is the exact same articulation you have on your hand. Look at your own hand. Lay it out like this in front of you. This is a left hand. The thumb goes this way and we found the thumb. We found a finger off of here and a knuckle. This is just the palm and this here is runs up to here. This is, this is a huge hand, it's 36 inches wide. Now, if you lay your hand back like that, you'll see a lift. I'm just going to jump ahead here. Right now, but um, I have the pieces, I have the knuckles and the fingers and so forth, but I, this, most of this is still out there. The, um, the material was um, 
extracted obviously on site and I did the extractions and we did it under plastics you know um, masks um, gloves sterilized everything all that in textbook and sealed pouches sent them off and labeled them the whole nine yards now at helix which was the only one in the country would do this based on the fact that they were going to be testing giants and nobody wants to get involved in this it's I'm going to tell you something. At this point, this was way back, just after Mary Schweitzer was, she she found soft body tissues. She actually dissolved some mineralized bone and so forth, and she could pull the collagens and make them gooey and gummy. And she had, I'm sure she had DNA and all that stuff in there as well. I know she did. Um, but she was literally attacked. She went on 60 Minutes on TV, and I'm sure 60 Minutes got attacked by academia and will never support your... I'm sure, you know, this is my own opinion. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Because they, everybody backed off, and she was literally ostracized. And I tried to get a hold of her. And, you know, this is, this is, uh, this is crazy. Well, this is like returning to the days of yesterday year. I tried to get a hold of her. She wouldn't talk to me either. So I ended up calling a guy down the hall from her and <laughs> where she worked, and I said, I got an emergency message from Mary Schweitzer. <laughs> and uh, he said, oh, let me get it to her. And, and anyway, I did. she ended up getting back to me, just saying, I only work on my own specimen, so I never got to really talk with her. But she never got, got anywhere with this. She's still in Never Neverland, as far as I'm concerned. She's not published, she's not a big shot. And she should be the one that is the big shot. She found out that these people were all wrong. Once you find out you're wrong, they're wrong, you're done. And that's exactly what happened. And the guy that you worked with her, Mark Armitage, they fired him. And he sued. I think he got a good settlement. Because they just fired him because they called him a creationist. And you're, oh, don't bring God into this stuff. And Because and she, she's a creationist. She believes that there is a God, which obviously, if you understand anything now after my research you understand something went on here there's some kind of god issue thing going on so this is what we're up against he i know he got it didn't work out real well for him doing this and nobody accepted it anyway oh you must have contaminated blah, 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 and on and on I, even t yesterday even today first thing this morning i popped in i saw some comments the guy says you, 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 you contaminated that DNA, idiot. <laughs> okay, Helix Biolabs took the samples that I sent in, and I did the extraction. He says, I will stand by the findings of what you sent me, which was excellent quality DNA in two of the three samples. One of them, the big fingertip, was a mud stone. And I was just wondering whether you could get get DNA out of the mudstones. The other ones were were perfect and I could go right into the artery and it was almost like raw blood. He said it was dense and it was excellent quality. Now the blood, st the mudstone was not good but I said yeah what the hell I'm gonna see if I can get it and yes it was there. He said it was there but it was it was a hard extraction apparently. Anyway but he took all that stuff and then he works through um, this company eaten by the, um, the sequencing um, from the extracted um, DNA and um, then they matched it to the database and it's all human so that's that's the story that's what it is and it needs to be looked at if 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 anybody in the um, expert field or, or, or anywhere or the um, scholarly or intellectual uh, archaeological world came up with this evidence it would be jumped on but it's like I'm not able to deliver it because I'm not in the club just not right literally the best people in the world did the CAT scans Jesse Garant and Associates and perhaps I can there's not words that could express how wonderful these people were and how how dedicated to science they are and this just gives you an idea of their abilities and they are deep 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 on the cutting edge and the, the um, CAT scans they did seven of them for us they were 3D color 2D and 3D and they you couldn't even imagine how wonderful these people were zero charge 
This is not cheap to do these things. The one that we had down at the University of Texas was very expensive, and it was it was terrible. But Jesse Garant and Associates, if you ever need something CAT scan, and, and they work for all the biggest companies in the world, and Fabio and Jesse were just the nicest people, and I can never thank them enough. So th those are the kind of people I was working with. I wasn't working with idiots. I wasn't working with a guy in his garage. You know, I have my own office set up here. I have microscopes. I had all kinds of stuff. I got it just as much as they got. Probably a lot more, because I understand it. And I understand what you need to look at these things, these things. And I understand when I see them what it is. And now I understand the chemistry that broke all these things down and created the feldspars and aluminum silicates. Originally, I didn't fully understand that because I didn't understand the, 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 the boiling waters and I didn't understand the salacious ooze. I just thought the, the heavy-duty silicon was because it's in your, your grip skin, which it is. It's, it's much more dense in your grip skin than anywhere else. But it was so dense in the mud fossils because the silicates attached to the outsides of everything. Like this here. This is my buddy here, Caesar. Caesar Augustus. There's his feathers. You see his feather pattern? He died in the flood, too. There was this little beak bill, whatever they call it, a little nose hole there. Now, they all died and flat like this. Now, what is this called? Feldspar. If you understand feldspar, it's called aluminum silicates. And they're infused with other kind of stuff. But every single rock, almost, it has feldspar on it because that's what a membrane was made out of, was phospholipids. But when the phosphorus boiled, it boiled down to aluminum silicates. Phosphorus, it boiled down to aluminum silicates. <laughs> this is what happened. And then the silicon attached with the, that whole deal and, it's, and solidified them in the Great Flood. And some of them were so well preserved, they're, you know, look at this, it's just like a piece of meat. I, I've shown this stuff many, 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 many times, but we're going to see it all again because if you're new to this, let's go right from the beginning. I'm going to show you just how it started and what I knew then and what I know now. And, and, um, and again, this is going to be very, very enlightening for me. So we're just going to keep moving forward. So we are going to go through all of those original videos, and I've already figured that I've made a couple of mistakes in the early videos that you know you learn as you go along now this is a hair follicle that I found oh I don't know just a few years ago I didn't have this when I originally was making all my claims but this is extraordinarily large now I don't know if what it's from but again I think you could probably get DNA out of this if you, you drill in you don't take it from the surface you have to drill in you, of course you get a real careful do this carefully but you go in where there's going to be blood and that's it right in here right in there you drill in there and then inside of there that's the stuff you take out you make sure everything's clean and sterile and your mask and all that gloves and you know it's, it's it's just obvious what you do but in some cases the blood literally literally runs out of there I mean, I'm not, I'm not kidding you. And that's a Phil found one it, who it had documented my whole series here that had just blood gushing out of it. Literally blood. He put his finger in it and it came out like he put it in a, a pool of wet paint, red paint. And that's when some guy said, oh, that's just paint. No, it's not. I, I'll show you. It was very, very red and it was blood and it was inside of a heart. And not only was the red blood there, the dark blood, which is the blackish blood, was in the vein blood was in there, and the lymph was in there too, because all three of those things work inside the heart. All three of them were there in his sample. And, you know, I, I was blown away when I saw it, what he found. And he found it within 15 minutes of the 15 minute challenge. He was blown away. And then when I, the last time I talked to him, I said, Do you remember when you first found that rock? And he said, It's just like it was yesterday. <laughs> You see that? That's Phil's heart. He saw this rock, and it was it was a complete rock when he first saw it. And he saw that little red spot, and he had a hammer, and he popped it, and it just cracked right across that. And they, that's exactly how hearts do that. All the plumbing comes off, and these are right down where the valves are. 
Now, the other side of the heart came off and it had separated along the valves. This is the other side of the heart. Now, you see the, the yellow, that's the, the lymph, really. This is the deoxygenated blood, more or less, the vein blood. This is the artery blood. And the artery blood just stays red and fluid virtually forever. Now, when he took this off, about an hour later, I think he took this picture and hit her head, had darkened up the blood. Well, you see this one here? This is the, 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 the bottom of the heart. All right, and all the blood ran down to here and was seeping out through the, this is some kind of a, you know, an, an entry, a tube, let's put it that way, coming in. I'm not sure which one it is, but a, a, a heart surgeon should understand what this is. And these are other tubings in here that run through, and you have your ventricle walls and all that business. Now, above that is this stuff. It breaks right off here. The plumbing breaks off. I mean, seriously, it breaks right off. And I see this over and over and over. It breaks right off at that line. Right there. And you get down in here and you can see all that stuff. That's exactly what you're seeing in Phil's heart. You're seeing a big bucket of red blood and then you're seeing one that's not quite so red and you're seeing the, the different, right here. That's what you're seeing on that bottom part. All right, now. That's this. Now the top part looks to me like it must have had the valves in it. Now I can't see it. I mean the, the plumbing. But he, he could be holding on to the plumbing on the other side because these are the tubes going up through there. And they have to exit this rock somehow. The bottom, as you can see, this would go right on top of here. You see the yellow? If you put the yellow on top of where the yellow is, that would go right on top of this. All right, so this was up, and that's what has all the plumbing on it. Of course, Phil's not around anymore, and I, um, uh, and I, I didn't think to ask him about the plumbing part, but th this is the rock. This is Phil's bloody hearts, or heart. It's one heart. Okay, don't forget, I have so much evidence, there is no denying what I have. And I have all the scientific tests and, and documents, to, and, and it is available to be scrutinized. If you say, no, it's not true, show me it's not true. I've shown it is true. And again, Jesse Grant Associates, the best there is. Now, I have all of these to go through, which is the ones that Phil preserved, thank God. Part one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I did all of them all the way up to like part 18. And I still got a ton of other ones on here that were, were not in a numbered, but a lot of, you know, and I've forgotten a lot of this stuff. Here's basic mud fossil principles and new courses. I was going to do the whole thing. I had all this stuff and then and it got wiped out. And somehow, I j came across this today just actually by accident. <laughs> Things just manifest destiny. And this is, look at this one, this is a, the colored, th that is membranes, and that's why they have all these different colors of transition metals. I, did, I got so much to go over, we're gonna have a blast. And I'm gonna remember all these things that I, I thought I knew at the time and I was making statements and I, I want to see how arrogant I was. <laughs> was I saying, oh, I'm going to write about everything? I don't know, maybe I was. You, you get to a point where you start getting frustrated and then you want to make to be argumentative and and it didn't work. It didn't work. They just, hey, 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 they hit out because they must have known I was right. That's the only thing I could think. Nobody's this incompetent that they could just miss all this stuff. It's just, it's impossible. It's totally impossible. So what's the alternative? You think about it. All right, you know what I think I will do is try to set up a schedule when I present each one of these, because I'm, I'm, I have at least 30 or so videos in this presentation that I did and was ready to present them, and then they got destroyed. I thought they were gone. So, like this, part one, the story about mud fossils. Part two, the proof rocks were alive is chemistry. 
a new universe. And it goes on and on and on and on. And these are very short videos. So as I interject all my verbiage and all my stuff about them, they're going to end up being pretty long. But I'm going to do one every day, probably at the same time. Now, I'd like to know people's idea of what a good time is. I'm on the East, East Coast, Eastern Standard Time. Um, but I, for now, I'm just going to put them up as premieres. And when you put a pre premiere up, what it means is I've, t I've already recorded it. I, it's all done. And it just goes up at a certain time. And you can click in and ask questions. But I prefer if you pay attention to the video and ask questions about the video or something that pertains in that area. Because a lot of times I just get people to want to chat about this and how nice the day is and blah, 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 blah. Well, that's fine. But that's not for here. Here I want people to really understand what I'm talking about. This is, this is new and this is the biggest thing literally in history. I, I'm not kidding you. Even back in the time of Julius Caesar, they would not believe about giants. They, they had lost all of that at that time, and they wouldn't believe it. And when, they, when one of these legions went into, I, I can't remember the name of the city or the town, they said that they had been ruled by this giant. And they, the Romans said, no, that's impossible. There's not, nothing could be that big. And they took them out and they unburied it and it was there. And then they said they buried it with great fanfare. Now, the academics said, oh, yeah, 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 that's all made up so that they could, you know, give praise to their gods, but they, they weren't real, but they just did it to be nice to these people. No, that's not, I'm showing what's real. And as one of the big shots, I believe it was Feynman in physics, he says, evidence trumps theory. It trumps dogma. Evidence wins. Evidence takes the day. I have the evidence. I win. I take the day. Mud fossils is real, are real, we're real, and will all be real forever. You can't stop it. It's undeniable and unstoppable at this point. Now, is academia going to continue to look very foolish? As I told them they would. The last words I had with Yale, with my friend Armand down there, I said, Armand, by the time this is done, you people are going to look like fools. And he said, yep, well, I guess we won't be the only ones. And I said, yep, you're right about that, buddy. Armand, you were right, buddy. <laughs> First thing out of Yale, I heard that was right. All right, I love you all. Stay tuned. This is going to get fun.